Today we are in Armidale in New South Wales, Australia. We've been asked to inspect this oak tree here for signs of possible decay. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a tomographic method, uh, also known as the Arbitum. Basically do an x-ray of this tree to see what it looks like on the inside. So the first thing we want to do is select where we're going to sample on this tree. So we can take a measurement at any layer in this tree but the best place to take a tomographic measurement to detect for decay is towards the base of the tree. So we don't want to do close to the ground, we want to do about 10 centimetres uh, above the ground surface. You'll also note this tree, it's not a nice round tree. We have some uh, trunks coming out and some indents in the trunk here as well. So the best place to put sensors is one on an area where it's coming out and one on an area where it's going in. Now we've decided how we're going to sample our tree next step is to take out our equipment. So all our gear comes in this uh, box here. We've got the battery pack, the sensors and the cables. So the first thing we want to do is decide where we're going to put sensor number one. Good rule of thumb is to always put sensor number one facing north. This is a great rule to keep to because when you come back and look at your data later you always know sensor one is at north. Now to find north you may already know where north is, but within the Arbiton package, it comes with a compass. So north is actually this way. So we're going to put a sensor on that side of the tree. So I've taken my nails from the Arbiton carry case. And with the nails, you want to hammer them into the conducting wood or the living wood, only by about two or three millimeters. Now this tree, it's got pretty thick bark. I don't want the nails sitting in the bark, but I'm not too familiar with how deep this bark is. So a quick way to find out how deep the bark is, is just grab a screwdriver and a hammer and just hammer it into the bark. And through the bark, the screwdriver will go in nice and smooth. And once it hits the actual wood, the screw, uh, the screwdriver will actually uh, stop. So you see there I'm hitting it, but it's not going in any further. Uh, so this tells me how deep the bark is. And judging by the length of that screwdriver, the bark on this tree is about two centimeters depth. So now I'm ready to put into the nails. I'll get that screwdriver out later. So like I said before, I'm gonna put uh, my sensors on these uh, parts of the trunk where they're coming out of the tree and also in these indents. Now, another rule of thumb as well with the nails is you don't have to have the sensors a set distance, but you don't want them any closer than 15 centimeters. So if they're too close, then your, your readings will be, uh, there'll be a lot of errors in the reading. So it's better to have them spaced by about 15 centimeters. And again, I'm sampling above about 10 centimeters above the ground. It doesn't have to be exactly 10 centimeters above the ground, but about 10 centimeters. So that nail is in the wood there. So I'm going to continue around the tree now, putting in all the nails. It is now time to prepare the sensors. The first thing you'll notice is each sensor has a number on it. This has a number one, a number two, and a number three. I always put number one sensor on the north facing uh, nail. This is a good practice to keep in mind because that way you always know where number one sensor is. You don't have to put the sensors in chronological order, but it's a, it is a good practice to put it in chronological order. I always go one, two, and three around the tree. This way in the future, you know where each sensor was and it makes it much easier to manage your data. Now sensor number one connects into the battery pack. You have this long, thick grey cable to do that job for you. So with the sensors, you have an arrow going in and an arrow coming out. So the cable always goes in this way, and that connects to the battery pack. Here is my cable to connect sensor number one to sensor number two. It goes in this side, 
sensor number two on that side there. Now I don't connect the sensors to the nails at this point. I always just lay the sensors in front of the nails so I know where they're going to be. We have 16 sensors on this particular tree. We've connected all the sensors together with the white cable. So sensor 16 is the last in our chain. You'll notice that there is no cable in this port here. So with your last sensor, you always leave this port open. Once we've connected all the sensors up, next thing you do is grab the tape measure, which comes in your Arbitum package. Put the hook around the nail for number one and run the tape around the tree. We're going to measure the circumference of this tree and put in the software where the location of each sensor is. So now it's time to start entering some data into our Arbitum software. So when you open a software, this is what the page, a blank page, will look like. So the first thing to do is enter some basic information about your site. So the project is Armadale Tree Inspection. The tree is an oak tree. Location is Armadale, Australia. Of course you can put as, as much detail as you want into these um, boxes. Now here tree species, we have a drop down menu of a whole range of uh, different trees. So oak of course is a uh, Kirkus. So I'll scroll down the list. I think I went past it. Here it is. And the date of course is the um, 2nd of May. And north is at zero degrees. Now, the next point to do is enter the height. Now that's the height where we've put our sensors which was at 10 centimetres. You'll notice that all the rows have uh, been the same. Now, the number of sensors here, it's 12. I've actually got 16 sensors. So I have to come up here. This icon here is options. And in the options you have over here, measurement and number of sensors. So I'm just going to increase that to 16 and OK. So now you'll see there are 16 uh, sensors for me to enter data. Now the next step is to enter the position of the sensors around the tree. Now position one is your sensor number one. And you don't, sensor number one is not at zero, it's actually at the end of your circumference. So sensor number one is always the largest value. So what I'll do, I'll get my assistant Chris to call out the numbers around the tree. So we're ready for my assistant to call out the location of the sensors around the tree. So nice and loud, thanks. Yeah. Sensor one, 548 centimetres. Sensor okay. two, 25 centimetres. Okay. Sensor three, 70 centimetres. Sensor 75 centimetres. So now connecting the sensors onto the nails. So at the back here is the clip that goes onto the nail head. Clip it on and tighten with this screw. See there, that's on nice and firm. You don't want it to be loose, you want it to be on nice and firm. Now, another thing you'll notice as well, I have sensor 16, my last sensor here, and sensor two on this side. So we always put the sensors going clockwise around the tree or going to the east, the south, the west, and back to the north. So that's a critical point to keep in mind. Number two always goes to the left, or clockwise, of sensor number one. And the last sensor will be on the right-hand side of your first sensor. So I'm now going to go around and connect all the sensors onto the nails. The Arbiterm software allows us to put in a more realistic shape of what the tree looks like. So some trees are circular, but many other trees have an irregular shape. This oak tree, for example, uh, has trunks coming out here and indents there. So the best way to picture it is if you throw a perfect circle around the tree. Um, I usually put my circle at sensor one and see uh, where land, all the other sensors land in comparison. So here 14, 15, 16 and one are more or less on my circle, but 13 is coming out a bit 
and 12 is in a bit. So we can actually put this into the software. What I'll do, 14, 15 and 16 I'll leave as uh, zero values and 13 I might give about a 10 or a 15, plus 10 or a 15 because it's coming out. And a 12 I might give a minus 10 because it's going in. Once we enter these values for all of the sensors, we'll give a more realistic shape of what this tree looks like. In the software in this column here, where it says radius difference, uh, this is where we enter the data to give the tree a more realistic shape when it is not a perfect circle. So I'll get my assistant Chris to call out the numbers around the tree and I'll enter the data. Sensor 1 on 0, sensor 2, 1 is 10. Okay. 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 Sensor 9, 15, and 16, 0. Okay, no worries. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so you see down here now, the shape of our tree has changed to give it a more realistic look of uh, what our sampling tree looks like. So all the sensors are on the nails now. So I'll turn on my battery pack, and we should see green lights appear on all the sensors, except sensor 16, which will be an orangey-yellow color. So I've turned on the battery pack. You see sensor one is green. All the other sensors are green, except 16 and 14. So 14 should actually be green. So I've actually made a mistake there. I put the cables in the wrong way. So what I'll do, I'll turn off my battery pack to change the cables. It is absolutely critical that if you make any changes to the cables, you always turn the battery pack off. So never leave the battery pack on and change the cables. Always turn in the battery pack off first, otherwise you will damage the sensors. So I'll turn the battery pack off and change that cable. Okay, so to talk to the battery pack, uh, make sure that this uh, green button is switched on. So now we're communicating. And down the bottom here, say COM2 is opened. Now what we want to look at is this column here, sensor ID. You'll see that it is blank at the moment. What we do here is we tap any sensor just once, and then the serial number of the sensors will appear in this column. Uh, so Chris, can you please tap a sensor? And you'll see here, numbers have appeared in that column. So this is a very good thing. We have numbers in, in all the rows in this column. That means all of our sensors are communicating with the battery pack, and we're communicating properly with the, with the battery pack also. So we've now entered all of our data. We're talking to all of our sensors. Uh, the shape of our tree has been inputted. Uh, everything is ready to go for our measurement. So up here with these tabs, uh, you'll see there's various uh, options. The one we want to look at while we're taking measurements is this delta percent option. Um, now what this is, delta percent is your error value. So here you can see 100% uh, error here because we've only tapped sensor 15 once. Uh, so we have 100% error. Now you want to look at these values and want to make sure that they're below 10 for the most accurate readings. So to get it to below 10, uh, my assistant Christopher will tap each sensor uh, at least 10 times. You can tap it uh, more than that if you want to, but we've found that at least 10 times is a good number um, to get these values beneath 10. So when you're ready, Chris, uh, tap away. So you see there, all the numbers are zeros or ones and twos. Uh, so we're getting some very good values from sensor one. So Chris will now go around to all the sensors and tap each one 10 times uh, for our measurements. So after you finish your measurements, make sure you hit this red square, which is the stop button, and that will stop the software communicating with the battery pack. Now our delta percents are all below 10. It's looking very good. So the next thing to now look at is the actual measurements. So here are the lines. This is our tree. I uh, see the sensors, one, two, three, going around the tree. Um, here's our compass up here, telling us which way is north. 
um, h 10 centimeters that's the height of the tree and of course we have a scale there and there so we know how large our tree is when we put this into a report what is very nice is this graph here see we've got some uh, purple and red bits in the middle this indicates decay the green bits indicate areas of uh, sound or intact wood so this tree looks like it's got some decay in the middle of the tree and on the outside it looks to be okay